Welcome to the Uncovered Podcast, brought to you by Mana Insurance Group, where we pull back the curtain on the insurance industry and provide valuable insights, guidance, and truth so that you can make informed decisions when choosing the right insurance. Hey everybody, Dan Vanderkoy here with the Uncovered Podcast. Today on our podcast, I have Blake Whitman from Mana Insurance Group, one of our team members here, and we're going to be talking about disability insurance. Disability Insurance Awareness Month is the month of May, and so we're talking about it today, right, Blake? Absolutely. Thanks, Dan, for having me come in and hang out. I always love sitting and doing these with you. We've done a couple, but yeah, um, yeah disability insurance is one of those things that isn't talked about as much as other forms of insurance. And I think it's important to get that out there. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things is we kind of jump right into this disability insurance is something that covers basically your income. Correct. And when you think about it, everyone wants to talk about life insurance. Um, they'll even talk about long-term care insurance, you know, providing if there's a, a medical need ongoing down the road. Um, but oftentimes we forget about replacing what might be one of our most valuable assets. And I'm a big Dave Ramsey guy. If you listen to what Dave says a lot of time, and even Ken Coleman on some of his shows, they talk a lot about your best wealth making tool is your income. Absolutely. And if you don't have that income to provide for your family, yourself, uh, to start providing and building wealth for your retirement too, um, what are you going to lean on? What's going to pay your bills? All that sort of thing. And so disability insurance really comes into play. The dis disability insurance replaces a good chunk of your income so you can continue to pay the main things like your mortgage, right? your groceries, your power bill, your water bill, that kind of stuff, um, and allows you to continue to live life um, and support you know those who you, lo who you right. love. Well, and I think as you mentioned, our income being one of our greatest assets, I think many times, even though we, we love having that income, it's important to us. I think we take it for granted that because I have this set contract or I have this set agreement with my employer, that that's not going away. But if that one thing happens and now all of a sudden it is taken, you're not able to work anymore. Uh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you don't have that. Yeah. And even if you have, workers' comp insurance or L&I through the state of Washington for on-the-job stuff, sometimes that only goes so far. Right. Um, and as well as what happens if you get off the job, right? Like, I know plenty of people um, that have missed time off work, things like that, for a four-wheeler accident, mm -hmm. for falling off a horse, for, um, you know, they're maybe put a new roof on at their house, or they're doing something like that, and there's a fall, a ladder slip, things like that. And, and that's where that disability really comes in. It's, it's for something that is completely unplanned, maybe a car accident, right? Anything mm -hmm. like that that happens that could carry on for a long period of time. And again, life insurance is talked about because it's final. We all know that at some point we're going to die, right? Right. But disability insurance, a lot of people don't think about. And if you, if you really look at the expense in buying disability insurance, typically it's about on average, so this is kind of average round numbers, your one to 3% of your total annual income is typically what you can purchase it for. So if you're mm -hmm. thinking, hey, I wanna, I wanna really protect this asset that I have in, in building wealth and providing for my family and my income, man, for 1% of that, I think I'm willing to do that to kind of to take the safety net and and have that there for us in case there's something that comes up. Yep. Well, I think a big portion of that in what you said is is just that simple idea of I want to go to bed at night with that peace of mind knowing that if something were to happen to me tomorrow and I was not able to continue to work, that I would still be providing for my family. And, and what a gift that is to your loved ones, your mm -hmm. your spouse or your children, right? That hey, I I love you enough that I want to protect you that if something does happen to me that we can continue moving forward in life and to be able to go to bed at night and know that that is there, I think is a huge deal. Yep, absolutely. I, it was interesting. We were, um, this last week I was down at a conference in Dallas and they had, a, there was a lot of business leaders there and business owners and a few of the, the conversations um, carried on to a little bit is, is succession planning. Hmm. It's about um, how to how to take care of things for when you're gone. Well, if I, I started thinking about that and how that applied to what we're talking about today even a little bit, and 
what's going to happen if some, maybe a key member from your team or yourself all of a sudden has to be removed from the company that you work at, maybe from the company you own. Um, mm-hmm. I know we're in the process of reevaluating just all of our you know, team leads and their roles and things like that. And what should, what kind of disability or life insurance should we have on them? That sort of thing. And so it even comes into play where it's not just for you know, an individual like you or me personally, like I have, I have a disability insurance policy on myself that if something happens, it takes care of Aaron and the kids from an income standpoint, but I also own a company, right? So I also have mm-hmm. some passive income that can come through that. But there is a certain portion of that where we would have to hire someone at Mana to replace my role to manage as a CEO role, right? To, to take that on if all of a sudden I can't get out of bed in the morning or cognitively I'm not there anymore. And so that disability insurance helps offset that salary, 100%. right? And, yep. and allows that to be paid directly to that, that other person where my disability will then come straight to Aaron and I. So... Um, even thinking about it as, is there a key person in your company, not only just yourself, but another key person that if they're gone, man, you really want to make sure they're taken care of still because they might recover from it down the road, but it might take three, four or five years. Correct. Right. And so, so those are things that a lot of times we don't think about. Right. Right. I, in fact, I just am finalizing two different disability policies for two family members that co-own a business together. And, and it's exactly what you're talking about. If, if one of them were to get hurt or injured in some way, they have to be able to continue running that organization. And that's where that disability policy comes in and, mm-hmm. and not only helps the family in that individual's income, but also is set up to help um, that company as a whole. Yeah, Blake, so you handle a lot of the processing side of things for that for disability. Um, so you see a lot of different things. Yep. What how difficult is it up front just to be like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of brainstorming about this. Mm -hmm. I think I might want a policy on myself and my wife, or I want it on my executive team, or I want it on this key person in our company that handles all the manufacturing or they handle, you know, all the sales or things like that. What, how difficult is it to get the ball rolling and and get a quote? Right. In all reality, it's incredibly easy. (laughs) I'm going to need a name, date of birth, what your job entails so okay. like your title and and many times it makes it easier if we get kind of a, a percentage of of what your job is 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 it just completely administration is are you quoting out business i mean just give me a feel for what that job is and then what your income is and at that point i just send an email to our broker and millennium brokerage group shout Marini, out to, yes. to matt and justin yes and bg yep <laughs> Um, I send an email to Matt and usually within 30 minutes, usually he's incredible. Thank you, Matt. Um, let's, let's not over promise a 30 minute turnaround though. Uh, fair enough. Matt fair might enough. be upset with us. That's fair. <laughs> usually. <laughs> um, anyway, real quick, I'll get a quote back. Yep. And then at that point, then it's just a matter of going through the process. Yeah. So on those quotes, like Blake was talking about. The reason we ask for a description or a job title is because disability insurance is extremely, extremely discriminatory. Like we've talked about in life insurance, things like that. Insurance is all about discrimination. So they want to look at what your job is, how old you are, uh, your health. Have you had any, you know, are you taking any prescriptions, things like that. Um, one of the big reasons for determining what they call class codes in disability insurance or the class level is is it high risk you know my job sitting behind a desk isn't super high risk sometimes i get a little excited and jump around when the mariners are playing and they hit a home (laughs) run or something like that but uh, for the most part i'm not going to hurt myself at my desk right right so then they're going to look at okay um what's his age are there any crazy activities is he you know a race car driver on the side is he skydiving that sort of thing right which no so, so mine is going to be a lower rate because of that. Now take, for instance, someone like I'll say my brother and father-in-law, they own a, uh, they're contractors, right? So they build pool buildings. So if they're climbing up on a roof for 30 feet up in the air, things like that on a ladder, well, that's going to be a different class club, but then they're going to come back and they say, okay, if they're an owner, if they're a con- general contractor and they're an owner, how much of it is paperwork? Versus how much of it is actually like 
on the job site, right? Yep. And so that's going to make a big difference in playing where their time is split, right? And so you kind of, you got to get a ballpark on that. And, and once we get that, then they can kind of break that out. Sometimes they'll break it into two different classes or they'll rate you kind of right in the middle of them yep. um, and go from there. Is um, once, once an application is done and a quote's done, Blake, what's the process then at that point to find to try to like push it across the finish line yep once we get the application submitted the carrier is going to go through an underwriting uh underwriting can go quick sometimes it doesn't um depending on medical history which they're going to look into yep and it's it's unbelievable what insurance underwriters find mm -hmm. it, it can be the smallest little thing that that you completely forgot about that ends up popping up and can affect that underwriting process so i never try and promise a length of time because i don't know your history right it, it could go really quick it could take some time they might have to ask for your medical records At that point then you have to wait for your physician to get same that moment. to the carrier you know, so there's a lot of things in play, but basically they're going to look at, again, that percentage of what you're doing. That's going to help them write that out. They're going to look at your medical history and then they will come back with an offer. And sometimes it's just a straight up offer. What you applied for is agreed upon. Other times they might come back with, well, we'll do this, but here's an exemption that maybe for the next three years, if this specific injury happens, then that won't be covered for three years and then that exemption is removed and you go forward. Yeah, and something like I've seen with that, I've seen that on two or three different people recently where they've had a regular chiropractor visits, right? So they've, right. they've excluded and, and I've seen this, yeah, this is probably th probably three or four people over the last three or four years I've seen yep. um, where they're, they're gonna do a two or a three year exclusion on anything related to the spine. Correct. And you're like, well, why do I even buy it then? Right. Well, the thing is, is you don't know what else is going to happen. Right. And I've also seen it now that I've been doing it long enough that that three year comes up. I actually just a couple of weeks ago, I got an email that says, hey, it's been three years. There's been no issues. That exclusion is now removed from the policy. It's a full blown policy again. So it's nice to be able to get it in there, get it going. That three year, two, three years, if there is an exclusion on something can be removed after time. And, and some of that's negotiable and we can kind of go back and lay yep. out the case and say, hey, this is a situation, that sort of thing with the underwriting and have a conversation about it. It's not just always a drop dead. Correct. Um, at some point they do that and they say, well, this is what we're offering, take it or leave it, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so. well, the nice thing is, is, is those exclusions usually are a period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. This isn't from the beginning of the policy until the expiration of the policy yeah. where we're talking, you know, for two years or three years. And maybe we negotiate it down to one year. Yeah. Um, you know, we're able to do that. But at least we know you're covered for everything but that for this period. And then in three years, again, like you said, now it's a full blown policy and we don't need to worry about anything. Yep, exactly. I think one of the other really cool thing is there's constantly new products coming out in disability insurance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say, well, if I'm going to pay all that money over the next 20 years until I, let's say you're 45 and you plan on work until you're 65, I'm going to pay all that money over the years. Well, why don't I just put it in a savings account or do something like that? Well, the, the bottom line is, is that it's going to replace typically disability insurance replaces about 60% of your income, Correct. 60. Sometimes you can get up to 70. It's usually 60 to 60, 65. I was going to say 65. Yeah. Uh, percent of it. And, and the reason they do that is the reason they only replace 65% of your income is because they eventually want you to get back to work. They don't want you to just kind of take it and be like, Oh, I'm just going to take this check the rest of my life. Yep. Right. And so they're trying to get you back there. Now, as you kind of get into a lot of the different um, nuances of a disability insurance policy. I like to say there's kind of the, the, the stripped down version and then there's the Cadillac version. And uh, with the Cadillac version, there's things like own occupation rider, which means like mm -hmm. basically you're covered basically till you can go back to your, the job or the occupation you were in. You don't have to take a lesser job for something like that. Um, the other thing that's been to me is kind of a really interesting deal. And I have this on my own policy it's called a return of premium waiver yeah. or rider. Um, and what that does is that allows me, I'm paying into this X amount per year, knowing that I'm going to get my, my 60, 65% of my income if something happens. But when I turn 67, if I haven't used any of that money in that policy, I get all that money back that I paid Correct. in premium. Now, number two, if I even used 
part of that disability for a period of time. If that's less than the amount I paid in, I get that money back, which to mm-hmm. me is a game changer. And now not, not every company does this. There's <clears throat> very few companies that do, but there, it's out there. I have it on me. I have it on a couple other clients. Um, but to me, I'm just like, man, if I know I'm going to pay this yep. and if I never use it, I know I'm going to get a check for however many hundreds of thousands of dollars down the road, right? Yep. 20, 30 years down the road. Well, maybe not that much, but all that money back at the end of it, man, to me, that's a no brainer. Now you have to pay a little bit more to get that return of premium rider. It's, it's not quite double the premium. It's probably about one and a half times ish. Yep. Um, so you're paying more up front, and the, I guess the argument against it would be, well, can't people argue with me? Can't people just take that extra money and invest it? But I'm like, yeah, but are you going to really? Right. Right. <laughs> totally. I mean, everyone has the, the right uh, thought in that. But here's something that it's a win-win situation when it comes to that return of premium rider yep. is you're covered. If you get injured and you can't work, you are going to be covered first and foremost. Hopefully... And we live in the world of insurance, right? And I tell my clients this a lot. And when they ask, why do I need this? Well, my response is, let's look worst case scenario. It's got to be worst case scenario because that's what we're insuring against, right? And we could go no matter what type of insurance we're talking about. But here in this situation, worst case scenario, you were injured and you can no longer provide for your family. That happens. Now you're covered. But with the return of premium rider, Worst case scenario doesn't happen. You don't put in a claim. Now, all that money that you paid out is now coming back to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, is it more expensive? It is. But that's an investment. You're going to get it back. And and so let's say you never use it and you put all that money year after year into this, this premium that you're paying for this disability insurance policy. And you never need it, which is... An incredible thing, right? Because that Ideal. means the Lord's blessed you with good health, that you've never had any crazy incidents, things like that. That's awesome. But what a great thing to get a check back at the end of it. And in that meantime, you have protected and you have basically made sure that your most valuable asset in your income 100%. has been protected the entire time. 100%. And um, it was interesting. James Clear uh, wrote a book. He's a best selling author. Probably a lot of people have heard of this book now. Uh, called Atomic Habits, okay. and his big. He spoke at the the convention I was just at, and I'm in the middle of reading his book. And what, his big thing is trying to get one percent better every single day, yep. and basically the the um, fractional, you know, small gains over a long period of time make up very large gains, right? Mm-hmm. And part of that is predicting your being able to predict what you're going to do, and if you can from a habitual standpoint, if you can basically turn your brain that says, I'm going to do this no matter what, and I'm going to plan for this ahead of time, then when the decision comes to do it, it's already made up. So he used it. He's, he used the example of like, Hey, when my wife and I come home from work, the minute we get from home from work, if we tr- put on our workout clothes right away, then the next two hours is taken care of. We grab a quick bite to eat. We go to the gym, we do our workout, we come home because the decisions are already made because I put those clothes on. It's right. Well said, right? Um, it's the same thing when you're planning your financial future, when you're planning and you're saying, I'm going to budget this, I'm going to mm-hmm. put X amount in savings. I'm going to put X, X amount towards retirement. I'm going to put X amount to my disability or long-term care. I'm going to make sure my house is insured properly. All of those different things. You've taken out the guesswork of what happens down the road when something crazy out of the blue, out of left field, emotionally that will could destroy you, you've already got a process and a plan in place to do that, right? Yep. Well, I always even say, you know, to those that are younger, maybe newly married, you haven't set up those habits yet. So let's get going with it now. Let's, let's start that new marriage or let's start um, getting into the workforce. Maybe you're still single, but getting into the workforce and, and get into that routine from the very beginning that this is something that is important to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start it now. And that sets up victory over the rest of your life because exactly. it's already ingrained that this, I expect this for myself. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. There's a lot of things in my own life that I wish knowing what I know now, I could go back to when I was 
23 years old yeah. and, and start putting money in different places because I'd be set up really well at this point. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's understanding um, what the impact of the unknown right. could do to you and your household. And I think mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing that disability insurance um, is going to cover. It's covering the unknown. You can't yeah. predict tomorrow. You can't tell me that, you know, you're going to live till X, X day or X age, things like that. And, um, the, the biggest thing that you're going to get out of this is knowing that you and your family are protected in a time of need. So, um, what is, what is something, um, that you're seeing out there with clients on, uh, maybe, maybe a reason why they're not asking for disability or things like that. Do people, do you feel like there's an understanding of what it really is? Or do you feel like it's one of those things, you know, you got to have your car insurance, you got to have your house insurance because your mortgage is going to require or renter's insurance because your landlord is going to require it. Yep. But what's, what do you think the hangups of why people, you know, disability insurance isn't always top of mind? I think probably the first one goes off of what you just talked about was, am I really going to need it? I'm, I, I'm not going to get hurt. Like you just said, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I think that's assumption that we all make on a regular basis is we just expect tomorrow to be there, but we're only given today. Mm-hmm. Even scripture says that, right? Yeah. And I think if you allow yourself to think about that real reality that you may not have tomorrow or whatever that looks like, you may not have that ability to work tomorrow. Um, let's take care of that. Let's, let's go to bed at night with that peace. Right. I think that's the number one thing. The number two thing, um, I think is just that thought of not really understanding what it, what it is and how it works and how simple it really is. Like I said, basic information up front. And if we get approved 60 to 65% of that income is taken care of period. Mm-hmm. And we work with great carriers because that's another one yep. that I hear. Well, are they really going to pay out? Yeah. If this happens, are they really going to pay me this? Yeah. We do a very good job here at MANA. And again, with working with MBG, we are working with top-notch carriers that are very financially stable. So that is not a concern. Yeah, yeah. I think I think one of the things I'd, I'd like to hit on too is there is a ton of resources out there to figure out how much disability insurance you need, Mm -hmm. right? And it really depends on your income level and your lifestyle. So the other thing to take into consideration as you go through this, and and we do a lot of this for life insurance too, is if, you know, on life insurance side of things, if you were to pass away, how much income do you need to make sure that your spouse or your significant other or your kids can live off of, right? And the worst, like the worst case scenario is you're like, well, they'll be fine on this. Right. It was like, well, you've become accustomed to a certain lifestyle. Yep. So don't you think you'd want your loved ones to continue that? And that that kind of is the same as, as disability insurance. Now, the flip side of it is if you're like, well, I make fifty thousand dollars a year, but I'm going to go buy a, a disability insurance. I want to buy a big disability insurance so I can pay out more. It doesn't work that way. No. It's tied to your income. Right. And so, you you know, you can't just say, hey, I want fifty. I want um when I make $50,000 or I want half a million dollars when I only make $100,000. It doesn't work that way. It's tied directly to what your income is. So one of the other things the disability insurance will ask for, and it's really nice if we have this up front, but it's something we can do in the underwriting process is they always want your last two years of tax returns. Yep. So that is something that's required in the application process to make sure that we're being accurate. Now, if, you, if you're in a, um, in a job where you know you're gonna get raises or promotions or maybe you're commission-based, um, you're self-employed, that number can fluctuate year to year. So they kind of take the average. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can say, hey, I know I'm making X right now or this is the average over the last two years, but I know that we're on a path with our company that five years from now, I'm probably mm-hmm. going to be making around X, yep. right? And even though right now I'm only making this, I know that from the trajectory, from my experience in this industry, that I'm going to be making this yep. in five years. So what's really nice typically, and, and Millennium does a good job with this, is they're kind of our resource as a broker. Um, is that we can go back to them and just say, hey, we believe that the company is going to be doing this or their income is going to do this over the next five years. Let's make a note in the file. And then in that period of time, we can go back 
and there's an opportunity then to increase that benefit amount. Correct. So you can't say that you can't just start off and saying, I know I'm going to make this in five years. Oh, it doesn't work that way. They're not going to buy it. They're not going to buy it. No. Every, everyone, especially like people like me, who's like a dreamer and glass is always half full. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this. Right. Yep. It's like, and yep. I land there. I was like, well, I'm still making more. I shot for the moon and land in the stars. Right. Yep. Like, um, <laughs> but that's, um, that's another big thing is is understanding how to get there and then also having that relationship with your broker that you can go back and just say, hey, it's time to increase this, right? Yeah, correct. Um, so I think that's another big thing. The, the other thing I'd, I'd like to just kind of hit on a little bit is the resources that are out there. Mm -hmm. So number one, manainsurancegroup.com. You can contact us. We can walk you through the entire process. But the other, the other big resource out there is lifehappens.org. Hmm. So are you familiar with that? A website? little bit. A little bit. Yep. So lifehappens.org um, has a ton of information. It has disability insurance calculators. So you can kind of calculate how much you need. It has life insurance um, calculators, long-term care, all that. There are a ton of resources at lifehappens.org to kind of educate you on the process of what disability insurance is, what life insurance is, long-term care insurance. It is a nonprofit that is specifically for consumers to understand what this is and how they can utilize it and how it brings benefit um, to their life. Yep. And um, so lifehappens.org, a big plug for that. But Blake, is there anything else you'd like to kind of share uh, before we wrap up just about disability and, and our team here at MANA and, and you know? Yeah, well, no, I... I look forward to anyone that is interested in this to give us a call and we can, we can help educate. Um, we can get the process started real simple, but I guess at the end of the day, my question is, you know, what is important to you? Mm -hmm. And and if your family is important to you, I believe this is a must needed gift to give to your family. And I want to make sure we keep it with disability, but we just processed a life insurance policy. And what an amazing gift that was to someone that passed away to be able to gift his spouse and his family with a death benefit. Yeah. I would say the exact same thing with disability. What a gift that you can give to your family that if you become injured or unable to work, that you are gifting this to your loved ones, that they're still going to be taken care of. And at the end of the day, as a husband and a father, that's all I'm looking to do yep. is to provide. Well, and that's the biggest thing. Everyone comes to work to provide for themselves and their family. Yep. And now all of a sudden, if that opportunity is taken away from you, what are you going to do? Yep. And, and my, my thought would be you fix that ahead of time before something could happen with disability insurance yep. and that'll fill the gap. And then you sleep well at night. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, Blake, thanks for coming yeah, on yeah. chatting a little bit about this and, um, May is Disability Insurance Awareness Month, and uh, make sure to hit us up. We'd love to walk through it with you and your family and just see what's out there. Um, we can kind of shop the entire market for you and, and figure out um, what is really best for you as an individual and for your family, because every household is different. And yes. that's, I think, what sets us apart is we, we're not going to just try to shove a square peg in a round hole. We want to make sure that uh, everyone is met where their needs are at and, uh, and yep. work with you on that. So thanks for joining the uncovered podcast. Make sure to give us a five-star review and, uh, share with your friends and, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.